Are you interested in the newest features and the latest version of Photoshop? Let's start with my favorite, and I think it might be yours as well, photo restoration. As you're about to see, photo restoration takes a weathered, creased, compromised old photo and turns it into something kind and new. Now, it's still in beta, but what it does is uncanny. It studies millions upon millions of photos, old and new, and it applies that learning to your particular image. Now, is it trying to replace you? Well, it's a robot, so yeah. But you know Roomba? It, it cleans your house, but then you have to clean up after it. So don't worry, there will still be plenty of manual retouching left for you. Oh, and quick plug, if you like what you're about to see, I have more at patreon.com slash deeknow, including a video about my second favorite feature. Hmm, what could it be? I don't know, because I haven't recorded it. Meanwhile, let's see exactly how it works. Okay, just to give you a quick sense for just how powerful this filter is, notice here in the layers panel that I have a smart object, which means that I can edit my smart filter as much as I want, including the option to turn the filter off. So this is the restored version of the image. You may look at it and say, well, that is not a very good restoration. This corner is all messed up and it's kind of burnt or whatever. However, we'll, we'll come to that. However, notice if I turn this smart filter off, this is the original version of the image. So just with a filter, a few slider bars, just three, that's all we're going to apply, three slider bars, we end up creating this much improved effect right here. And I just gotta give a, a shout out to my favorite image vendor, stock image vendor out there, Dreamstime. You can check them out. All right, anyway, don't wanna dwell on that, but that's there, they're great. All right, here's the original version of the image, kind of. I stress kind of because I have made some upfront modifications. So, so I'll just scroll down a little bit. I have this heel layer right here. And so I'll turn it off so you can see that I did make some modifications to this corner. I kind of rebuilt it. And this purple stuff that's going on here, this kind of inky rot, whatever it is. And I was able to achieve this improved effect so this kind of base improvement if you will using the spot healing tool right here and so i'll just go ahead and select it so you can see what you want to do if you're working on an independent layer which of course you do want to do because this tool does apply pixel level modifications you want to turn on sample all layers up here in the options bar at the top of the screen and that way you're not healing the original image. You're healing on an independent layer, and you can do stuff like this. I'll just go ahead and click on this little blotch right there, and it goes away. Now, it's, it's not always going to work perfectly. In fact, I would argue that it didn't work perfectly just now, but it's an improvement. All right, so let's say you do that. You make some healing brush modifications here and there. You could even rebuild that corner if you wanted to. I don't, I'm not going to bother with that. Then you want to grab that healing layer, layer, whatever you call it. It's up to you. It didn't automatically name itself. I did that with, with by typing four characters on the keyboard, H-E-A-L. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and shift click on the photo layer so that they're both selected. And that way I can put them both inside of an impenetrable smart object that's going to protect these layers from harm. And you do that by switching back to your rectangular marquee tool up here at the top of the toolbox, or you can just press the M key. And that way you can just right click inside the image and choose convert to smart object. There's a bunch of different ways to achieve this, but this is my favorite. Anyway, choose that command. And now it combines those two layers into a single smart object happens to be called heel after the top layer, not the heel of your foot. That's a different spelling, but rather the fact that we healed that layer and you can rename it if you want to. I'm just going to leave it called that. And then go to the filter menu and choose neural filters dot, dot, dot. The one with the ellipses, that way you're going to apply whatever new settings you want to. Now, I want to stress, this is now going to be applied. Photoshop is going to apply this filter as an editable smart filter that you can go back and modify later. Later, that is, hence, editable. All right, I can pronounce editable, but I can't say later properly. I'm going to go ahead and choose that command. What's that? What, 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 what that's going to do is it's going to switch you over to the Neural Filters Workspace. Bless it. Now, I want you to notice that we have a couple 
of rectangles around the faces. And notice I can click on one face or I can click on the other. You'll see the selected face here kind of dimmed because we haven't applied a filter yet up here in the in the top right region of this uh, workspace here. And then if I click in this face, you, you can see that face as well. You know what I love about this image? I just have to say, these two are close. There's some, they, they, look, they're, they, they're kind of holding hands. There's a story here behind this image. I don't know what it is, but I'm delighted by it. It's intriguing. Anyway, that aside, now what you want to do is scroll down the list. In my case, now there is no knowing where photo restoration is going to be in this list. It might be any old place. Look at that guy. We, we get a little preview over there of that delightful child. In any event, in my case, it's still in beta. In your case, it may not be in beta anymore. But it, it, that's kind of meaningless because these things are constantly changing. And so what, what's going on with smart filters, just so you know? It's its own thing, its own group of filters. It's, it's, it's like a system running inside of Photoshop. So it's a program inside of a program, and then it has all these sub things going on inside of it. In any event, they're always changing. I'm going to turn it on, switch on photo restoration, and you're going to have to wait for a progress bar. But a moment later, you will see an effect applied. And if you want to do a kind of before and after just right out of the gate, then you can click on this guy, show original. It's kind of like a preview checkbox. I don't know why they didn't just call it preview. I'm sure there's some damn reason. But anyway, I'm going to turn it back on so that we can see that there is an improvement that's being made. But we've got these sliders. Now, I also want to call your attention to the fact that there are more adjustments available to you. The specific adjustments that you're going to see may vary. In fact, the whole darn thing may vary over time. But these adjustments right here, they don't really have anything to do with this photograph. We don't have a problem with JPEG artifacts or are no halftone dots whatsoever however color noise there's color noise going on but if i was to get rid of the color noise i'll just go ahead and crank that guy up to 100 so you can see that it just kind of eliminates the nice color we now have a homogeneous color inside of this image but it's bland i, I like the original colors better so i'll just go ahead and drag the guy back down to zero a delightful thing about this filter and i'm going to emphasize this more than once is that it buffers the last two settings. So if I were to switch back to 100 again, then it's going to buffer it. Notice we didn't see a progress bar. And then if I just undo that change by pressing Control-C, Command-Z on the Mac, then no progress bar once again. So the last two adjustments are buffered. Please keep that in mind. All right, noise reduction, that would be luminance noise, not an issue. So I'm just going to twirl this back close. These guys are worth paying attention to. Photo enhancement, enhanced face, they're different, and scratch reduction. So let's do this. I'm just going to zero these guys out. It is going to invoke a progress bar. Should go pretty quickly. And I'll crank photo enhancement down to zero as well. That didn't even give me a progress bar. That is nothing, by the way. I, I, I've shown you in the past skin smoothing if you set both values to zero. Remember that? you still get a change. Well, I'm not going to show you that right now, but it still invokes a change. Whereas all zeros for these guys, for the photo restoration values, as things stand right now, notice if I turn off the filter, it's not any different. So zero, zeroing out the values really does zero things out. All right, let's focus on scratch reduction because after all, we have a lot of scratches in this photograph. We have these little micro scratches right here that I don't seem to be able to reconcile, but then we have these big old creases and those we can get rid of quite nicely using the scratch reduction value. So I'm going to, for starters here, I'm just going to set this, let's try 50%. And in the fullness of time, we end up seeing a lot of those scratches go away. Notice that big, huge scratch that was right here. I, again, Control Z or Command Z on the Mac is going to undo. You do have multiple undos. Don't use them. I stress that because if you use them, then you're going to get into unbuffered territory. So what you want to do is one undo to check out the way it was and then Control Shift Z or Command Shift Z on the Mac to redo. Keep in mind, Control Z. Okay, I want to undo this time. Control Shift Z. Again, Command Shift Z on the Mac. 
to redo. And that way you're looking at two buffered states where this particular filter is concerned. And if you care, if you bear that in mind, your life is going to be so much easier for you. You're going to be very happy with yourself. All right, let's check out some of the other stuff that's going on here. We still have this big blemish right there. We've got these little micro scratches all over the place. We've got this weirdness. You, what you might want to try is a very low value and a very low value tends to be where smart filters are concerned 10. So I'll just go ahead and give that one a try. And now we can see, I don't know if we're seeing much of a difference, actually. This is before, so this is 50, again, two buffered states. This is 10, if I press Control-Shift-Z or Command-Shift-Z on the Mac. So we have kind of a smoother transition at 10 down here, but we still have, you know, pretty sharp edge. And then let's take a look up top here. We've got uh, this kind of gross wound. And so this is 10, by the way, scratch reduction is set to 10. And this is 50. So I'll go ahead and press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac. So don't go back any farther. If you press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac again, you're going to get an unbuffered state, which means you're going to get a progress bar. And you're just, I swear, you're just going to hate yourself. I love you, but you, you're not going to feel so good about you. What I decided to do, you can take this up to 100 and try that out, but I'm going to take this up to 80. And you can click on the value, by the way, and change it numerically if you like. But in any event, look, look, things are looking better. This is before... Don't, don't press Control-Z or Command-Z on a Mac more than once. And this is after Control-Shift or Command-Shift-Z. All right, so I think I think this is looking good. I want, to, I want to stress up here, this corner. This corner, not any better. It's just going to be wounded. You're going to have to fix that manually using something like, you know, the healing brushes and so forth. But this is before. I'm trying to be really careful. Yeah, this is before. So we have some wavering up here at the top. Actually, it's more pronounced than that. I'll just go ahead and show original for a second. Notice wavering top, big, huge wound right here. But if I turn that uh, uh, show original thing off so that we're once again previewing the image, you can see that it's in much better shape. I should now be able to press Control Shift C or Command Shift Z on the Mac in order to reinvoke a scratch reduction value of 80. Yay, that worked and I have no progress bar. So remember the rule of two buffered states where this filter is concerned. All right, you probably want to know about photo enhancement versus enhanced face. Let's start with photo enhancement. Why don't we? I'm just going to crank that up to 100%. You can play with a bunch of other values, but it does come at the expense of you sitting on your thumbs because, you know, you have to wait for the progress bar and the various second countdown, which you could check, by the way. If you're so inclined, get out your stopwatch, your phone, and see if it's actually accurate. But I'm not going to do that, especially since the very last second is very painful. But in any event, did you see that? This is before and this is after. Control-Z, Control-Shift-Z on the Mac, Command-Z, Command-Shift-Z. I'm harping on this because you're really going to thank me for that one, or you're not. It's up to you. It d depends on how polite you are, really. All right, Enhanced Face. Remember that it can see both of these faces. So Photo Enhancement just enhances things all over the place. Notice that this is before and this is after. It's it's not doing anything special to the faces that it's not doing to everything else inside the image. I also want you to notice, before we move on, photo enhancement is not sharpening. It doesn't create any little edge artifacts. It's basically sort of clarity, if you will, if you know what that is. But it's more than that. It's actually splendor. It, it, it is, it's because the, 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 what are these things called? Neural filters are looking at millions of other images and comparing them, running comparisons. So, and, and, and based on other people's retouching abilities, by the way. So you're, you're taking advantage of everything that's come before you. Would you like to see this next slider as opposed to just listening to me blather on? I'll go ahead and crank this guy all the way up to 100 as well. No reason to be subtle at this point. And notice that it, it, it enhanced specifically the faces. So again, before with Control-Z, Command-Z on the Mac, 
just the faces were affected, not their hands. Watch their hands this time. Control Shift Z or Command Shift Z on the Mac. Didn't make any difference. Now check out the faces made a huge difference. Now I think that's a little bit too much. This is before with the kind of foggy faces. And this is after with the very nicely defined faces, but they are starting to look a little over sharpened to me. So tell you what I did. I went ahead and clicked in this value, 100, and that way you can just change it to something else. And I'll just enter a new value of 80. And why don't we see how that looks? And I'll tell you how that looks. That looks great, in my opinion. And so this is before, that is 100. So control C, command C on the Mac, and this is after. So, you know, it's a subtle modification, but that's what I want. I want it to be a subtle difference. And, and so what I'm gonna do at this point is make sure output is set to smart filter. It will be because we already set up a smart object in advance, at which point you just wanna go ahead and click okay, knowing that everything you've done so far is entirely editable. And all you have to do to edit your changes is just double click on neural filters right there. I'm not gonna do it, but you can if you're so inclined. What I'm gonna do is turn the filter off for a moment just so we can see. Oh my goodness. I mean, here's why. I'll just explain something for a second. It's amazing that it can take care of this wound right here as well as these scratches. Notice this big scratch coming down the middle. That's This is before, this is the original image and this is after. So it does quite the number on that. But how in the world is it able to just take care of that huge problem right there? This is before, this is after. Well, two things to know. First of all, it's not, it's not perfect. We do have a little bit of a line at this point. We have a seam. And so you'd wanna heal that away. Once again, using something like the spot healing brush, or you could use the standard healing brush. It, it's able to do that because it has stuff around it. So notice before it's got all this stuff that, that it can work from around that big wound. Whereas over here in the corner, there's nothing on the other side of it. There's nothing, you know, but basically Photoshop is looking at here at the white space and saying, I guess you want white space. So that's what I'll give you. In any event, I think it's pretty darn amazing it's still in beta, so it might get better. We still have these, you know, pockmarks here and there, and we've got some scratches, some kind of micro scratches, I'm calling them, at various locations. There's a lot of stuff going on down here, and then you'd want to definitely fix this because this is before and this is after. Actually, kind of like the before version better. Do you? Well, in that case, here's something you can do. You can click on the filter mask, the white filter mask thumbnail here inside the layers panel. And then you can go ahead and grab yourself the brush tool, the standard brush, not the healing brush. And I'm going to make the, the, the brush bigger by pressing and holding the right bracket key, the right square bracket key on the keyboard. And I'll press the D key in order to invoke my default colors, white and black, where when, where when you're working with the mask. And I'll press the X key to swap them like so. And then I'll reduce the size of my brush a little bit. And then you can just paint that good old regular transition back into place and work from there with, once again, the spot healing or the healing brush tool inside the program. All right, but I'm going to scroll back up to these delightful young ladies right here. Which, which which are something of the past, back when people held pinkies with each other. An extraordinary example of the power of the new photo restoration filter here inside Photoshop 2023, and I presume moving forward. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. What's your favorite new feature in Photoshop? Anything from 2022 counts. Comment below. Oh, and by the way, check out deeknow.com. It takes you to my Patreon. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Photoshop Now.